Well, I guess we need to talk about Mosaic, because uh, it's literally too strong. In a good way. This is a good thing. I don't want him to nerf it or anything, but it's kind of nutty. You don't need to worry about survivability. You don't need to worry about next hit delay. You don't need to worry about any of that. Once you get the end game gear, you literally just walk through and shred, and you kind of can't mess it up. But for the people who want to learn at least a kind of efficient way of building it based off of my roughly 20 minutes of testing, that's a lie. It was, it was more like two hours, but still, here's the video for you. So it goes without saying, but at this point, if you haven't seen it, they added Mosaic. Mosaic's a rune word that basically says if you're using two of them, you don't expend any of your charges from martial arts, and you refresh your charges whenever you use a finishing move. Now, there's a lot that goes into martial arts, but for the people who already know how it all works, I'm just going to explain the gear and the skill tree that I picked out and why I picked it out that way, mercenary and stats. Then I'll have a big breakdown of the mechanics section so that you can try to make the most informed opinion possible because there's a lot that goes into it. But again, I don't want to waste anybody's time. They already feel like they're a martial arts wizard and they just want to see what other people are building. I love timestamps down below for everything. So for the people who like seeing stuff, click around. First for the gear, we're using dual mosaic. I don't have any plus skills in the form of staff mods on these yet and it was still shredding. Also, the rolls were pretty bad. Our left one is decent enough. The right one is almost min across the board. Board. So just with that part, the roll on the mosaic isn't super important. The plus skills aren't super important. But for people looking to min max, you'd want to have plus three to Phoenix Strike, probably plus three to Claws of Thunder. And then you either want to have plus three to Weapon Block, because that is one of our best versions of survivability on the build right now, or any of the other utility skills that you would typically want to pick up that you don't necessarily want to put the skill points into. We're using a Griffins with a Facet, Enigma, uh, Mara's for the resistance and the plus skill. We're using Myrmidon Greaves as the best damage base. These are literally random boots that I just went and gambled and then upgraded to Myrmidon Greaves. Since we're using Dragon Talon as one of the finishers, we want high kick damage on our boots, and this is the best way to get it. From what I've seen from gear, if you're looking to kill bosses slightly faster, the gameplay is Player's 8 that you just watched, and we absolutely shred Diablo without any crushing blow, open wounds, or anything like that. But technically speaking, yes, you could take something like Gore Riders and upgrade them as well. Shadow Dancers are a fine option. Alder's boots are really good on more of a budget, but ultimately I think you're gonna want some pretty nasty rare boots that you either upgrade or just find in Merman and Grieve form. Rachnid's Mesh for the FCR Breakpoint, Raven Frost for Cannot Be Frozen, as well as the Stone of Jordan, and then 320 Gloves. I think I messed up the affixes on these. Uh, yeah, they're of the Magus. All of this is hero edited, all of it single player. Sue me. We're using Call to Arms with the Spirit on Swap. This is really nice just to get our base skill damage up as high as possible. You don't technically need this. You could have more Magic Find on Swap or another option or a setup where you're not using Mosaic. There are some scenarios where you may not want to reset a run, but you do want to be able to dump your charges in an efficient way. I haven't really found a reason for it. I think Call to Arms is probably going to be the go-to, but whatever you need, you can put it here. Across the bottom, obviously we're using Skiller Life Charms. We're using a Crack of the Heavens. If you couldn't tell from the Griffins, we are lightning focused on this build. Torch Annie, and then all res magic find across the charms. Here is where a lot of people are going to differentiate and have a lot of different opinions on what skills to max in where. Again, I'm going to talk a lot more about all this in mechanics section. If you're just looking to build the exact same build that you just saw, this is how we did it. Maxed out Fist of Fires, Claws of Thunder, and Blades of Ice, both for the synergy and also because we're using charges across all of these. Only one point in Tiger Strike and Cobra Strike, and then only one point in Dragon Talon as well as Dragon Claw. I think getting more kicks on Dragon Talon is just not worth it, and ultimately on Players 8 I end up using Dragon Claw so much more often, so that I'm not stuck in the attack animation of Dragon of Talon kicking at empty air. Obviously, we're also maxing out Phoenix Strike. This is the hallmark skill of the build. And then I went and put my one point wonders down into Fade. I use Fade over Burst of Speed. I think it's just strictly better, especially since we're teleporting most of the time. You could put dumb points into Weapon Block to get up to 60% block here. I didn't find a reason to really need that, but you could. On Hardcore, obviously that would be better. And then I put my dumb points into Claw Mastery so that it's easier for me to actually go get the charges at the beginning of the run. It really sucks when you miss with an attack. It just feels terrible and you're like, oh, I thought I had all my charges, but I didn't. And then you don't realize it once you start kicking and you're not getting all the animations. 
I do think the animations are the easiest way to figure out, do I have the charges that I need? Uh, because Blizzard hasn't given us a way to do that in game yet. Please, please just put a charge counter on these skills. I'm begging you. With Battle Command, Battle Orders in Fade Up, we put in just enough strength to be able to wear our gear with our boots being the highest strength requirement that we had. Nothing into decks, everything else into vitality. That puts us at around 3,300 life with over 500 mana, and we're almost max cap res across the board. I didn't find a reason, even in Worldstone Keep or in the Chaos Sanctuary, to really worry about my resistances with Fade Up. But if you wanted to, you would swap out some of the all res charms for lightning charms to be able to solve for the sunder charm. Technically speaking, you could also get a two to martial arts, 20 IS, either crafted or rare gloves, and then put a lot of lightning resistance in that spot too, if that was something that you wanted to worry about. Technically speaking, if you want faster boss kill speed, you could go with the crushing blow crafted gloves. And then if you happen to hit two martial arts, 20 IAS as well as lightning res on that, that would probably be the best in slot gear. The build sitting at 24 physical damage reduction. If you had more to fade, obviously this would go up higher and we're at just about 150 magic find. Now let's talk about the charges that you want to get on this build because it is going to vary a bit. I built this out so that you can basically not have to worry about next hit delay at all. You'll just get the damage on different targets. We are going to max out Fist of Fire and get three charge Fist of Fire. We're getting three charge Claws of Thunder, three charge Blades of Ice, and then two charge Phoenix Strike. So we want to be using the Chain Lightning on Phoenix Strike. We don't worry about Tiger Strike. We don't worry about Cobra Strike. We quite literally completely sustain ourselves off of the life per kill from Enigma and just how high our natural resistances are and our physical damage reduction. Add on top of that, we're putting everything into hit recovery considering Claws of Thunder is casting Nova, which typically puts things into hit recovery, as well as freezing most things with Blades of Ice as well. So you're kind of never really in danger on the end gear setup. So then the question became, what if you took this building, gutted it? What would a budget version version of Mosaic look like. And to be able to test that out, I basically just ripped off all the good gear and we actually came across some pretty interesting concepts. So just to very quickly show you what we did change, we took away all of the skillers. Uh, we swapped out to a hustle armor. I was also running treachery here. I think they're basically the same. I think in a lot of different scenarios, hustle will feel better for some people, especially if you don't really want to deal with a lot of clunkiness. I do like never having to recast fade though, and the plus two to skills goes a really long way from treachery, so it really comes down to play style. Instead of our helmet, we just threw on a bulwark as well. Uh, First off, this is just like a great melee helm, but really we were just looking for the PDR. You'll see that we actually got a min roll on the PDR, and I was just looking to add on some additional survivability. We didn't change anything else about the gear at all. Obviously things like Arachnid's Mesh don't really make sense anymore because we're not casting Teleport, and this doesn't really help us out at all. But I just wanted to see what happens is if you took off all the skillers, you took off Griffins, you took off Enigma for no teleport, and then also we took Infinity off of our Mercenary and we swapped him over to just a plain Insight, which you can't see behind my big dumb head. First and foremost, you can't just ignore next hit delay at this point. So whereas before we were kind of ignoring the fact that the Chain Lightning from Phoenix Strike as well as the Nova and Charge Bolt from Claws of Thunder overlap with one another, meaning you're not getting 100% of your damage output on each target that you might expect you to be, you really couldn't ignore it any longer. And since we were only going to be able to use level 1 charge for Claws of Thunder to be able to maintain getting the most damage possible out of Chain Lightning from Phoenix Strike, it meant we had to swap out the skill points. We only put in the base skill point for Fist of Fire, we're not actually using this and we're not using the Meteors from Phoenix Strike, we're actually maxing out Tiger Strike here. Maxing out Tiger Strike means that we're getting a lot of that additional physical damage, so we can actually zerg down single targets while our AoE is buttering everything else up. This also means that we actually put Cobra Strike into the rotation for charges that we're getting so that we can get our mana and life back. We're still maxing out Claws of Thunder because we want the biggest bonus synergy as well as the biggest damage on hit, and we're still maxing out Blades of Ice. We didn't change up anything about Dragon Talon, Dragon Claw. Obviously, you now need Dragon Flight since you're going to need that mobility for maintaining your charges and just smoothing out the gameplay in total. While you don't have to do it this way, I would still recommend picking up something like Shadow Warrior as well as Mind Blast and Cloak of Shadows if you're a bit newer to playing on the Assassin. And I was just going for what would be the strongest version of this build. So we go one point down into Fade to be able to pre-cast it. If you're not using Treachery, it's really important to be able to cast it yourself. And then we're not putting anything into the Trap Tree. Oh! The skill rotation here means that we're picking up three charge Tiger Strike, three charge Cobra Strike, 
one charge claws of thunder the way that i was handling that was quite literally taking off a claw when i was using the skill since claws of thunder is a dual attack animation three charge of blades of ice and then two charge of phoenix strike this gave us the best aoe damage possible it gave us the best survivability with blades of ice we were doing a good amount of physical damage so that when we were facing off against stronger monsters especially on that p8 footage that's playing we were able to do enough physical damage for it to matter and then have enough sustain to always stay alive even on this really budget version of it, where we basically gut the vast majority of survivability, damage, and just overall DPS output, never had to use a potion. As long as you have your charges up, you're basically unkillable. We didn't change anything about the stats, other than the fact without Enigma, we have to put more points into strength, meaning we had less points in vitality. This, along with battle orders and battle command up, as well as fade, means that we're sitting at 2400 life, 500 mana, and we're near cap so. on everything, except for lightning resistance. The mercenary stayed the same as well, except that again, we swapped out to an insight. I generally felt like this mercenary was kind of inconsequential. His might aura does help your kick damage, which is really nice. So I'm not saying that there's a better alternative. Just as like a last little bit of insight, I wasn't necessarily expecting to have to really change the build just because the gear got worse, but I really found that you can't ignore the glaring next hit delay, as well as the reduction in survivability from not having life on kill. And then lastly, the reduction in mobility from Enigma meant that we needed to increase our mobility overall to be able to compensate for that and literally just play better. I also found that I wasn't able to just use Dragon Claw all of the time, which is my preferred method if you have enough damage to be melting everything. I had to rely on Dragon Talon, which also meant that sometimes after a monster was dead or got knocked back, we were kind of just sitting there kicking for a bit. I don't really think there's really a way to manage that in a, in a better sense. You just need the physical damage component if you're farming on anything higher than Players 1. If you're on Players 1 and you're just elite sniping, just go ahead and dragon flight in and then use dragon claw it's going to be the fastest way for you to get your procs out and you're probably going to be one to two shotting everything so dragon talon really becomes hyper redundant at that point Alrighty, you few brave souls who made it far enough in to actually get to the deep mechanic section of the video here you go i'm going to break down everything that you need to know per skill just so you have a better idea of how they all work together again so you can make the most informed decisions possible for how you want to build i'm literally going to go in order of skill just kind of rattling off the important things to notice dragon talon always does the amount of kicks that it has regardless of whether or not it hits a target or if it kills a target or knocks it back that's why you're so often going to knock things back and then literally not land hits with kick going further also on online play there's a lot of like desync issues that kind of come up from using really fast attack skills and you may not necessarily be in the place that you think that you are so if you're not connecting try to tele stomp even further and get right next to a monster before you actually attack them since it's a kick move it's going to be using your boot damage to determine damage not your weapon damage in any way shape or form any enhanced damage from skills like tiger strike is also going to be based off of your boot damage and boots actually use strength for their enhanced damage modifier and it's greater than 100%. That's why you can get really high kick damage using this skill. Dragon Claw uses a two claw attack. Because of this, you're only stuck in the animation of doing a duo attack on the assassin. It is going to benefit from claw mastery, whereas your kick is not. So you are gonna get the additional attack rating, damage and chance to crit. Dragon Tail looks at the physical damage that your kick is going to do and then takes that damage component and adds on basically enhanced fire damage and then it doesn't in an explosion around it so what that basically means is that it looks at the damage that you're going to do against the monster it does that physical damage and then it adds on a big fire damage explosion because of that you're going to hit the monster's physical damage reduction and their fire resistance that's why you might see people using Reaper's Merc if they are using Dragon Tail, so if they're actually getting the physical damage component of it that they want. Cool thing about Dragon Tail is that it is a single animation. And again, any increase to your kick damage is going to increase the amount of fire damage that you do. That's why you would use Tiger Strike with it to get a huge amount of enhanced damage off weapon to increase your kick damage to increase the effective amount of fire damage that you do in the explosion. Dragon Flight is also a kick move. It also teleports you. That's why we're going to use this on the budget version. It's good. On players one, you can actually just dragon flight around as opposed to tele stomping and then using a different finisher. So there's even a place on endgame gear where you would want one point dragon flight if you like that play style on lower player settings so that you can stack more magic find onto your kit. 
Tiger Strike is going to add a lot of off weapon enhanced damage to your attack. So if you're using the dual claw attack, this is going to look at your claw base damage and then add that damage on from Tiger Strike. There's not a lot to say here. Typically increasing the amount of damage that you're going to do is also going to increase the amount that you're going to leech from Cobra Strike. Cobra Strike can't leech off of monsters they can't be leeched from, so Undead and Uber Mephisto, so this isn't going to suddenly solve survivability issues, but if you are doing physical damage on your kit at all, at least the 1 to 2 proc, and typically you should just go all the way up to charge 3 of Cobra Strike, will probably handle all of your survivability issues going forward. Fist of Fires is a lot, let me try to break it down. Fist of Fires does fire damage on charge one. On charge two, it adds a radius to that fire damage. And then on charge three, it also leaves a pyre of burning damage that'll do DPS over time. Fist of Fire has a hidden mechanic where it will convert the physical damage that you're doing to fire damage equal to your skill level and only apply that to the target. Basically, it looks at your skill level and it multiplies that by three. Anything over the excess of 100 is completely ignored. That means at skill level 34, all of your physical damage, if you're using Fist of Fire, is converted to fire damage. It does that to the target, then it does its skill damage in an AoE around it if you at least have charge 2. What this means is that yes, you can use Tiger Strike to increase the amount of physical damage that gets converted to fire damage, but because it's converted to fire damage, you cannot leech from this. If you have skill level 34 fits of fire active and you use any attack, you cannot leech from it. You can't even leech from it if you had life tap up because you're literally not doing physical damage component on your attacks. So keep that in mind. That's very, very important to understand, especially on the budget version of this setup. Claws of Thunder is going to add single target lightning damage on charge one. On charge two, it's going to add the Nova. And on charge three, it's going to add the charge bolt. The issue here is that the Nova and the charge bolt both have next hit delay for frames. What this means is that the Nova comes out first, it will hit everything. The charge bolts won't be able to hit anything within that Nova ring. So your charge bolts will typically then kind of go out and then hit other stuff. What this basically means also is that you're, if you're attacking too fast, like if you have a really fast kick speed, most of the Nova damage that you're putting out won't hit any targets. You'll basically only get roughly 50% of the Nova damage, and again, you won't get any of the charge bolt damage on the targets near you, but you will get the lightning damage from the melee attack itself. Blades of Ice is really simple. It just does cold damage, and it does it in a radius around it on charge two, and then on charge three, it actually freezes as opposed to chill. On monsters that can't be frozen, it will apply chill. This one's just good. It just does AoE cold damage. That's all you need to know. Get three stacks of it. It's great. It literally solves all of your survivability issues. I've said that for like three or four different skills. That's how busted martial arts was. It it was just kind of the worst build to play. Phoenix Strike is not as confusing as the other skills. Charge 1 will do a Meteor. The Meteor doesn't have next hit delay. It just takes a while to land, so quite often you're killing monsters before it comes down. It is good for single target fire damage though against bosses. Charge 2 will do Chain Lightning, and that's what you've been seeing everywhere. The fractal pattern of Chain Lightning going out. The issue with Chain Lightning is it also has 4 frame next hit delay. So if you have Claws of Thunder Charge 3 and Charge 2 of Phoenix Strike, the Nova will go out, that will apply next hit delay. Then the Charge Bolts will go out slightly further than that applying next hit delay, but your Chain Lightning will rip through. Typically speaking, after you're done attacking, that Chain Lightning will circle back and hit the same target and be able to apply damage. But basically with Claws of Thunder Charge 3 and Phoenix Strike Charge 2, the immediate area gets hit by a Nova, the area just outside of that and then further away gets hit by the Chain Lightning, and then monsters somewhere in the middle get hit by the Charge Bolt, and again, it's ignoring all of that on the single target monster in front of you. But again, on Endgame Gear, you kind of don't need to worry about it. You're just shredding everything on the screen regardless. Charge 3 Chaos Ice Bolt also has next hit delay. This is going to do a smaller kind of frozen orb, more centralized on your target effect, and it's going to hit everything around it, but monsters will only get hit by one bolt per proc. This also means that again, with the Nova, if you're using Claws of Thunder, the immediate area will get hit by the Nova, and then monsters outside of that immediate area will get hit by the Ice Bolt. It's not just bad, and it's not the worst way of playing it, but since you're probably going to be using three charges of Blades of Ice for survivability in the cold damage already, using the Chaos Ice Bolt is just kind of 
not optimal in any way that I think that you can legitimately overpower it with the rest of your gear. I'm not saying you can't use it. I am saying it's probably the worst option on Phoenix Strike, either using charge one for single target or charge two for AOE and being able to abuse stuff like Griffins is going to be a lot better in most cases. So that was obviously a lot. I hope that that answered any question about any individual skill. If I could do a recap, the most important things to know are anything above skill level 33 on Fist of Fire means that you can't leech regardless of having life tap or having a super strong Cobra Strike. The next hit delay on Claws of Thunder Charge 2 and 3 are going to interrupt the next hit delay on Phoenix Strike Charges 2 and 3 as well. On lower gear, this is a lot more palpable, and I would not recommend trying to use anything above Charge 1 on Claws of Thunder if you're using Charge 2 on Phoenix Strike. On endgame gear, it doesn't matter. You're literally just applying maximum lightning damage to the entirety of the screen simultaneously, and everything dies even on players eight once you have infinity, a griffins, and a sunder charm. Technically speaking, Blades of Ice is going to decrease the total number of bodies on the ground if you're looking to hybridize into using Death Sentry as well. On earlier game gear, I think that Death Sentry is fine to pick up, even if it's only like five points there and then three points into Fire Blast so you get the additional shot from the synergy. But on anything above players three, where Death Sentry typically is falling off already, I don't think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. I haven't tested it super well. That's really conjecture at this point. There's probably a way to make it work where it feels good. I haven't really thought of a way where I think you actually need it. And just to understand the impact of Infinity on the build, Infinity is going to increase all of the damage that you do from all of your martial arts other than plain Tiger Strike without any conversion. Reducing monsters fire, lightning, and cold resistance means that the every damage component of Fist of Fire is going to do more damage to them. Every component of Claws of Thunder, Blades of Ice, as well as Phoenix Strike are also going to do more damage. On top of that, you're going to do more damage when you're using something like Dragon Tail, which is again adding on an additional explosion of fire damage based off the physical damage carried by your kick. So Infinity is without a doubt the best option on your Mercenary, in addition to reducing monsters' defense so that when you're just charging up your skills, you're not missing a ton and wasting a bunch of time at the beginning of a run. There we go. That's the Phoenix Strike Assassin. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that I was able to educate or at least answer some of the questions that you might have about the build. Let me know down in the comments if you have more questions. Again, I would highly recommend just going to the timestamp for the mechanic section and kind of re-listening. I know I talk pretty fast, throw it on to like 0.5 speed, but I was trying to get in as much as possible so that again, people could skip around if they wanted to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it helps and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.